we keep falling in and out Subhanallah If there ever was a doubt Subhanallah Our hearts are so quick to break At this moment our souls are away Forgive yourself and defy your heart disease Care for others and give your spirit a release We keep falling in and out Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear respected viewers. Welcome back to another episode of Moments for the Heart. And I hope that you've uh, been tuning in with all the episodes, inshallah, and been following along. And if not, I think you should be able to find some of them online and, and in other places. And uh, I hope you've been following me in this journey, which I've also been taking with you, uh, purifying the heart, purifying the soul, purifying the intentions. And, uh, and this sort of thing, which really will bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will bring you very near to Him, will make you love Him, uh, for the sake of just His beauty, really. This is, we sometimes forget how beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really is. And so I think by purifying our heart, understanding His nature, uh, and who He is, this is one thing that will prevent a lot of these diseases, making dhikr, uh, pondering on His divine names, and we'll get more into that as the series goes on, inshallah ta'ala. We've also mentioned several uh, diseases of the heart, what the scholars would call diseases of the heart, that's spiritual ailments. Uh, we've discussed their symptoms, their signs, uh, their causes, and their cures. Uh, and I hope that uh, it's been of some benefit to, to everybody, inshallah ta'ala. The spiritual disease that we're going to be looking at today is the disease of envy. In Arabic they call it hasad, envy. In fact, there's a surah of the Qur'an. It's the, if you open your Qur'an right now and you turn to the very last surah and then look at the surah just before that one, it's called Surat Al-Falaq. Surat Al-Falaq means the chapter of the dawn. And that surah ends by saying, uh, you're seeking refuge in Allah and you say, min shari Hasidin idha hasad. I seek refuge from the envier when he envies. And this is part of the Quran. Now, why do we need to seek refuge in Allah from envy? Well, first of all, we need to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from envy from ourselves, which should be obvious, having uh, when you're envying somebody, it's not good, and envying somebody else. Uh, the envy of somebody else. You don't want somebody else to envy you. And we'll discuss that, inshallah, why that is as the time goes on. So what's so bad about envy? Hasad. The first thing you can, you can think about is that it's the, one of the characteristics of Iblis, the devil. This is his character trait. Because remember, Shaitan, Iblis, the devil, he doesn't disbelieve in Allah. He's had conversations with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows who Allah is. This isn't his crime. His crime is pride. His crime is pride, followed by envy of Adam, alayhi salam, our father. You know, our forefather, Adam. Because if you recall the story of creation in the Quran, Shaitan, who was one of the jinn, metaphysical creatures made from, as the Quran describes, a smokeless fire, Shaitan says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am better than him. I am better than this person that you've made out of clay. You made me out of fire, and you made him out of clay. I am better than him. Right? So this is kibr, this is pride, this is hasad, this is envy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels to make sujood to this creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made from clay. And this really upset shaitan because of his kibr. So remember that if you have hasad, you have exactly the characteristic of shaitan. Really, and this is, this is not uh, the characteristic of the mu'min, to have envy of anyone. I want you to think about this. I mean, really, envy, hasad, is arrogance before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really, it, it is being arrogant. It's saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should not have given this good thing to that person. I deserved it more than him. So you can see right from that idea that it comes from kibr, it comes from being arrogant before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it comes from being just arrogant with your fellow creatures. Because maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows something good about him uh, and knows something bad about you. 
right? So none, the mu'min should never have any envy for anybody because it's really a big disrespect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives somebody, that's what they deserve in one way or another. And everything will make sense on the day of judgment, okay? You're going to come on Yom Qiyamah, on the day of judgment, everything will be explained to you, you know? You don't have to wait six months, uh, two years, you know? Everything will be explained, you know? You're going to watch the whole story from beginning to end, with, with director's commentary, right? You're going to understand everything. So there's no need for you to have envy uh, of any of God's creatures, of anything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to somebody else. You know, there's no need to do that. You should know that some scholars call envy the, ro the root of all spiritual diseases. Uh, not all of them have this opinion, but some of them say that. They say that if, if it weren't for envy, maybe our hearts would be pure. Right? But, but we have envy. This is the problem. We, we feel that this person doesn't deserve that, and I deserve it, and I'm better than them, and so on. So this is something that the Muslim, really, we have to be on guard uh, about it because it can cause a lot of other problems. It can cause a lot of other spiritual diseases, and it can make you more and more distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more distance from guidance, and so on. You have to remember something about these spiritual diseases, okay? They are, are the shield, they're the shield that prevents Amr bil Maruf wa Nahyan al Munkar reaching you from you understanding it. There's many verses of the Quran. There's one verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the Prophet Muhammad during the height of his da'wah, He says, Do you think they understand what you're saying? And they don't understand it. Their heart is full. It's full of dunya, it's full of hasad. Remember that uh, I think it was Utba, one of the enemies of the Prophet. Uh, he said that I'm not going to follow the Prophet Muhammad because if revelation was going to come, it should come to one of the great men of the two cities, meaning Mecca or Taif. What is this? This is envy. He envied the Prophet Muhammad. And that envy acted as a shield. It distanced him from Allah. It distanced him from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It distanced him from understanding the message of the Quran. It distanced him from uh, accepting truth. Right? So envy is a very dangerous sin. It's something that really we need to, to purify our hearts of this uh, terrible thing. So w since we do need to purify our hearts of it, what's the cure? What is the cure for envy? Now, there's several of them that the scholars have listed. Uh, the first thing to remember is that envy harms the envier the most. It's part of our, our, of our aqidah, of our Muslim belief, that, to believe that if someone envies me, it can cause me harm. Unless I'm reciting Surat Al-Falaq and Surat Al-Nas on a regular basis, which is the practice of our predecessors and, and scholars and so on. Uh, but envy can harm, and that's a reality in our belief. And it's also an aspect of the evil eye. But a lot of Muslims don't know that envy also harms the one who harbors it. This is part of our aqidah. It will harm you just the same as it harms them. And so if you find that your life is, is mired in difficulties and you're having all of these problems and so on, Maybe you want to check and see if you're envying somebody that's maybe bringing this on yourself. Because you want your heart to be pure of these sort of things. You don't want it to be full of envy uh, and dislike that, that you, somebody has got something that you didn't receive. Remember also that it is, it is way outside of the sunnah to envy anybody. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who would he envy? He didn't envy anyone. His heart was completely pure of any envy whatsoever. And this is one of the amazing things about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to remember also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all giving. And He's all wise in who He gives to. He knows better than us. And we mentioned this uh, briefly earlier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows more who has a right to, to receive what. And you know, it could be your envy is the only thing pre preventing you from getting the good thing that the person you're envying has. And I'll give you a, an interesting story from a famous Muslim poet and scholar. His name was Al-Azma'i. And he was invited to have dinner one night at the, the house of a, the tent, rather, of, of a Bedouin. And in the traditional culture at that time, the woman would serve the, the guest in front of her husband. Well, this particular uh, scholar, he noticed that the woman was very beautiful. He could just, he saw it in her face. But the husband was very ugly. He couldn't believe it. So the first chance he got when the husband went to go do something uh, outside, he couldn't ha control himself anymore. So he asked her, how is it that such an ugly man <laughs> has such a beautiful wife? And you know what she told him? She said, have, have fear of Allah. Have fear of Allah. 
and she went on to explain maybe he's done something very good in his life that made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so pleased with him and I'm his reward or maybe he did I've done something so bad and he's my punishment you know subhanallah and this is the the, the high-minded thinking of the early Muslims and this is something that we should all strive uh, to understand and have that, that thinking ourselves. Also having taqwa, having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, realizing that His punishment can reach you anywhere, at any time, uh, and He may punish you for the feeling of, of, of having hasad, of envying your brother. Because remember, we said that that's arrogance before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're telling Him who He should give His sustenance to, who should He give His rizq to. And you have no right to determine or dictate that. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to say, who he will give what to. And that's not our business. That's the business of the Creator who, who gives us everything. And on a personal note for some of you, I want you to think about this. Envy, a lot of times, has to do with our own low self-esteem. We feel bad about ourselves. We feel that we, you know, don't have something good in life. And so we don't like it that somebody else gets it. Don't let shaitan come to you and tell you that you're not good enough and that you should look to what somebody else has. Your life is probably very rich. I'm not saying rich in terms of monetary wealth. I'm saying rich in terms of things that you could be happy with and find contentment with. And if you can't, then it could be that it's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which case it's only temporary. So just keep being patient, don't have envy, and don't let shaitan come to you and tell you that you're, good, you're not good enough. Don't have envy, don't envy anybody. Purify your heart of this, make dhikr, get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll find that you're a much happier person, you'll find that you have much more tranquility in your life and you will also find that dunya will eventually come to you. If you don't envy anybody else, if you have tawakkul, if you trust in Allah, ask Him by His name of ar razaq of al ghani you know, these beautiful names, uh, you'll be fine, you'll be taken care of inshallah ta'ala. Well, that's all the time we have today, and uh, I'm very happy that you could be with us today, and uh, we hope to see you next time, inshallah ta'ala, and I hope that you've uh, progressed in your spiritual journey. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all among the believers whom He loves to meet, and who loves to meet Him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We keep falling in and out, subhanallah, if there ever was a doubt, subhanallah. Our hearts are so quick to break At this moment our souls are awake Forgive yourself and defy your heart disease Care for others and give your spirit a release We keep falling in and out Subhanallah If there ever was a doubt Subhanallah The ultimate fact if merely in you, that Allah's mercy ever look after you. Subhanallah.